A blank occurs at x values that make the denominator zero that do not cancel out with the numerator when factored. So what did not factor and cancel? That was a vertical asymptote. So vertical asymptotes make you divide by zero. There's no factoring and canceling that could get rid of a vertical asymptote. One of these are just called a VA. And this was the case when you plugged in and you got a number divided by zero. Any number divided by zero indicates you have a vertical asymptote. If an x value is a vertical asymptote, then the limit is, that's one of our three options, it's a vertical asymptote where both arrows go up, that limit would be infinity. Both arrows could go down from the left and right, that limit would be negative infinity, or opposite directions, if one's going up and the other's going down, or down and then up, the limit would be DNE. So the limit is infinity, negative infinity, or does not exist for a vertical asymptote. If the factor cancels out with the numerator, then there is a hole in the graph. That happens when you plug in and you get zero over zero as your case. So number over zero, your answer is infinity, negative infinity, or DNE, if it's a number divided by zero. This is the other case, a whole is zero divided by zero, and you can factor and cancel these, and that is great. And the final answer is where the limit does exist and is finite. It's just a regular number. It's not going to be DNE, infinity, or negative infinity, like a vertical asymptote would be. So let's keep going and do more examples with this. We're gonna to try to plug in because we know that that does give us our final answer sometimes. We did a couple examples where we plugged in and got an answer out. Let's see if we can do that. If not, we're gonna to try to factor and cancel and then plug in. Or if factoring still makes us divide by zero, we're gonna make a table of approaching values. So our three methods, plug in, factor, make a table. So looking at this first piece, we have seven. We want to approach 7 in x squared plus 2x, so I'm going to grab my calculator and do parentheses and put a 7 in there and square it, plus 2 times parentheses 7, and my numerator is 63. That is totally fine. 63 divided by anything is good unless we have 0 in the denominator. So I'm going to plug in 7 minus 7 is 0, and then when you square it, you still get 0. So bummer, we do not have our final answer here, because plugging in 63 divided by 0 gets us an error in our calculator. But knowing we have a number divided by zero does indicate that we have a vertical asymptote. My answer is going to be infinity, negative infinity, or DNE. But my second step, I'm still gonna try to factor this because there's a chance I just flat out plugged in wrong. So I'm gonna still try to factor it, see if I can cancel anything out. If not, factoring is going to make that table of approaching values a little bit easier. So factoring the top, x squared plus 2x, some good practice here. It's a binomial, and we don't have a difference, so it's not a difference of two squares, but we can pull out a greatest common factor of just a regular x. There's no big number, but there is a least power x to pull out. x times x is x squared, and then x times 2 gives us 2x. So there's the top, and the bottom is kind of already factored for us. One thing you could do is write it as multiplied by itself x minus 7 squared is just x minus 7 times x minus 7, right? 5 squared means 5 times 5, 2 squared means 2 times 2, so x minus 7 squared means it's just multiplied with itself. So we did some factoring there, and now we could still try to plug in and see if it doesn't make us divide by 0, um, but we still have this x minus 7 in the denominator, and 7 minus 7 is going to be 0, so that doesn't help. Can we cancel out what makes us divide by 0? No, there's no factors that cancel at all, but this will make making our table a little bit easier. So we're going to use those factors and make a table of approaching values. We want to approach 7 on both sides. So we can't plug in 7, but we could plug in something near 7. So in other words, we could plug in maybe 6.9. And it doesn't matter the number we get, it matters the sign. We want to figure out, are we going to positive infinity or negative infinity? So plugging in 6.9 to the first factor is going to be just positive. The second factor, 6.9 plus 2, is also going to be positive. 
in the denominator, plugging in 6.9 minus 7 is going to be negative. And then 6.9 minus 7 in the last piece is also negative. So I end up with two positives in the top, which is going to be positive. So we get a positive in the top divided by a negative times a negative is also positive. So what's this left-hand limit doing? It's going up to positive infinity. Let's compare that to plugging in a number near 7 but on the right. So near 7 but on the right we could choose 7.1. Plugging into the first factor, 7.1 is positive. The second factor on the top, 7.1 plus 2, is also positive. In the denominator, 7.1 minus 7 is still going to be positive. And then 7.1 minus 7, again, is positive. So we are going to get a positive divided by a positive. So what's the right-hand arrow doing? Is it going up or down on this vertical asymptote? Positive divided by positive is also going up. So what's my two-handed limit going to be? Two-sided, we have infinity on the left side and infinity on the right side. My two-sided limit is going to be positive infinity. There's my final answer for that vertical asymptote. If we look at another one, first step, plug in. Then we're going to factor. Then we're going to make a table if we have to. If nothing cancels to make it so that we can plug back in. So I'm going to grab my calculator first off and put 4 in parentheses and replace all the x's with a 4 in parentheses. So 4 squared minus 2 times 4 minus 24 in the top gives me negative 16. That's fine so far. But we can't divide by 0. That's what makes it extra work. It makes it so you can't just plug in for your final answer. So I'm going to do 4 squared minus 16, which is 0. So bummer, we have a number, another number divided by zero, so this is going to be a vertical asymptote. I'm still going to always try to factor because it makes making that table a lot easier. I didn't even have to use my calculator at all. I just had to look at the signs of each term. So I'm going to factor this top piece. I want to multiply to be a negative 24, so I must have a positive times a negative. I want to think of factors that differ by 2 that multiply to be 24. So 6 and 4 multiply to be 24, and we want to add up to be a negative 2, so the bigger factor must be the negative 1. Negative 6 plus 4 is negative 2, and 4 times negative 6 gives us that negative 24. So we have x plus 4 times x minus 6. In the bottom, we have a difference of two square numbers. x and 4 are getting squared. So x plus 4, x minus 4. Does anything cancel? Yes x plus 4 is actually cancel. So wait, can we actually just plug into this? Maybe this was meant to be a whole, and we just didn't realize because we plugged in incorrectly. Well, we're taking the limit as x goes to 4. So 4 minus 6 in the top is negative 2. And then 4 minus 4 in the bottom is 0. So still... This is a vertical asymptote, but by factoring, it makes it a lot easier to plug into than plugging into the original function. So we're going to plug in and see the signs on our table of approaching values. We're going to approach 4 this time from the left and the right. So 3.9 and 4.1. And we're going to plug into this factored and canceled form. So I just need to plug into x minus 6 for the first piece. 3.9 minus 6, definitely going to be negative. In the bottom there, 3.9 minus 4 is also going to be negative. So I'm going to get a negative divided by a negative. So is it an up arrow or a down arrow? Negative divided by a negative is positive. So we have an up arrow on the left-hand limit. Now I'm going to plug in to that factored form, but for 4.1. So 4.1 minus 6, that is going to be negative. And 4.1 minus 4, 4.1 minus 4 is going to be positive. So we're going to get a negative divided by a positive, which is going to be negative. So my left-hand limit is infinity. My right-hand limit is negative infinity. So what's my final answer going to be? My fingers do not meet 
on those arrows there. So my final answer is that the limit does not exist. But doing that factoring was definitely not a waste of time. It was so much easier to plug into this factored form than to look at this original problem and have to use my calculator a few times. So always plug in, factor, then make your table because at the very least, making a table will be easier with those factored forms. Like we saw above plugging into that x times x plus 2 and, and that one plugging into the x minus 6 compared to the original. So let's keep going with these. We're going to plug in, factor, make a table. All right, so if we plug in negative 2 to this, we're going to do negative 2 in parentheses squared should be 4 minus 4, which is 0. 0 in the top is allowed. 0 divided by 10 is 0. The only thing we can't do is divide by 0. So plugging in 6 times negative 2 is negative 12 plus 12 is 0. So this doesn't give us our final answer. It makes us divide by 0. But we have a 0 over 0 case, which is a relief to me. That means we have a whole, which means factoring should give us our final answer. So we're going to take the limit as x approaches negative 2 and factor the top. It's a difference of two squares. x and 2 are getting squared. So we're going to have x plus 2, x minus 2 to factor x squared minus 4. And in the bottom, we don't have a difference of squares. In fact, it's a sum. It's not subtraction, it's addition. But we can still plot a 6, our greatest common factor. 6 times x is 6x, and then 6 times 2 would give us that 12. Does anything cancel? Well, it should because we have a whole. So it should cancel out and give us a nice final answer. So let's see what happens. If we plug into the top, we get negative 2 minus 2. So in the top, we have negative 4. We plug in for x. And in the bottom, we just have 6. So we get negative 4 over 6. You could reduce that to be negative 2 thirds. If you wanted to, you are not required to simplify. But either answer is perfectly correct. Negative 4 6 just does reduce to be negative 2 thirds. Okay. Let's try those three steps again. Plug in. Factor. It's going to work for a 0 over 0 to just factor and be done. Get a final answer. Or if it's a number divided by 0, we're going to have to make that table. See if you can pause the video and run through those three steps on your own. I'm going to start here by plugging in negative 3. Negative 3 squared is 9 minus 25. We get negative 16 in the top. And then 8 times negative 3 plus 24 in the bottom gives us 0. We get another number divided by 0. So vertical asymptote, I am still going to factor this, see if anything will cancel. And then I'll end up making that table of approaching values if it was really supposed to be a number divided by 0. If I plugged in incorrectly, I should be able to factor or cancel and then maybe find a final answer if it was supposed to be 0 over 0. So to factor x squared minus 25, we have x plus 5, x minus 5. It's a difference of two squares. And in the bottom, we can pull out an 8. Times x would give us 8x, and times 3 would give us 24. So nothing to cancel and then plug in nicely like the one above, but we can use this to make our table of approaching values. Be careful on this. Don't do any extra work. This is the limit as x approaches 3, but just from the right-hand side. So we don't have to make both sides of the table. We want to approach 3, or negative 3 rather, just from the right-hand side. So is that negative 3.1 or negative 2.9 is to the right? Which one's the bigger number? You'd rather have negative 2.9, $2.90 negative in your bank account than negative 3. It's a little bit better. So very close to negative 3, but a little bit to the right. And we're going to plug into the factored form and see which way our asymptote is going. Our answer is either positive infinity or negative infinity. It can't even be D and E for this because it's not a two-sided limit. So negative 2.9 plus 5 is going to be positive. Negative 2.9 minus 5 is going to make it even more negative. So in the top, we're ended up with a negative. In the bottom, we have an 8. So we have a positive first term. And then we have negative 2.9 plus 3 is going to make it just barely positive. So we're going to get a negative divided by a positive. So we're going to be 
going down with our arrow to the negative. So what's our final answer going to be for this right-hand limit of the vertical asymptote? It's going to be negative infinity.